Hey everyone, Brad here today from the OFAH Heritage Center. Today's lesson is all about one of our types of waterfowl, ducks. In today's lesson, we'll aim to answer five questions all about ducks. What are the types of ducks and how do we identify them? Where do they live? What do they eat? What are ducks known for? And can you harvest ducks in Ontario? So stay with us today as we learn all about ducks. What are the types of ducks and how do we identify them? Ducks are often called waterfowl. This term refers to ducks, geese, and swans. Ducks are well adapted to life in the water, particularly swimming, floating, and even diving. Their webbed feet allow them to thrive in the water and they are used to propel them and to steer while swimming and diving. The feathers on a duck are waterproof. Ducks maintain waterproofing by preening, grooming themselves, and picking oil from a gland at the base of their tail. They spread this oil through their feathers as they preen. This helps them to keep their feathers waterproof and to keep them dry in all wet conditions, even underwater. Ducks vary in size, but they all have a similar elongated body shape. It is very common for many duck species to display something called sexual dimorphism. This means that males display different traits than females. This is usually seen in color patterns. Males are often more brightly colored than females, and females are usually more plain looking. Their beaks, which are known as bills, are made up of a bony structure covered by a fleshy material and tough skin. The edges of ducks' bills are soft because waterfowl often find food by touch, feeling their food much as we sense things with the tips of our fingers. Waterfowl bills have a nail at the end that's used for hooking or moving food items and other objects much like we might use our fingernails to manipulate and move things. Now, let's discuss the two categories of ducks that we see in Ontario. Based on their habitats, ducks are commonly separated into two broad groups, puddle ducks and diving ducks. However, habitat is only part of this story. Here are some key differences you can spot with your naked eyes to tell the two types apart, with no biology degree necessary. Puddle ducks, also known as dabbling ducks, are some of the more common ducks you probably think about when you imagine a duck. They usually have long, oval-shaped bodies with long tail feathers and a long neck. They also typically have a bright colored and sometimes shiny or iridescent patch on their wings that we call a speculum. They have long, round-shaped, flattened bills to help them filter out food when feeding. The insides of their bills have tiny rows of plates called lamellae. Lamellae are used for trapping food as ducks feed and filtering out mud, water, and other items that they don't want to eat. Dabbling ducks also have quite large wings when compared to their body size. Their legs are located close to the center of their body and their feet are often fairly small. This makes walking on land easier for them. And this is helpful as some species of dabbling ducks often use farmers fields, grasslands, and forests to forage for food and to nest. Dabbling ducks can also be identified because they float high up while on the water and you can see most of their bodies while they float. Another way to identify them is by the way you may see them feeding. If you see a duck tipping up, as it's sometimes called, with its head underwater and its rear end up in the air, that usually identifies a puddle duck. When they feed like this, it's called dabbling, which is how they get their title of dabbling ducks. When the birds are dabbling, their leg colors are easy to see. This can be a good identification clue to be able to tell the species. Many of these ducks have bright orange, yellow, or reddish legs. 
You can also identify them by the way they take flight. Dabbling ducks usually spring up straight in the air and flap their wings to fly away. This is one reason why dabbling ducks have such large wings. They're often found in weedy water and marshes and can be seen walking on land too. Some examples of dabbling or puddle ducks are mallards, black ducks, wood ducks, pintails, and teals. And there are many more species of puddle ducks out there. Diving ducks typically have smaller, more compact bodies than dabblers. Their bodies are usually long and slim shaped and they have smaller wings. Diving ducks have more serrated bills, sometimes with a hooked tip. The serrations in their bill and this hooked tip allow them to solidly grab underwater plants, crayfish, fish, insects, and underwater roots of plants. They have much bigger feet than puddle ducks, and their legs are near the back of their bodies. They're built this way to help with swimming and maneuvering underwater. It creates a more streamlined form and less drag in the water, which would slow them down. The patches of colored feathers, called speculum, on these wings are not as colorful as they are in dabbling ducks, and they usually lack a shiny iridescence to them. Diving ducks also sit quite low in the water if you see them swimming on the surface. This is because these ducks will flatten their feathers to their bodies to make it easier to see underwater and faster for them to dive for food. They will usually dive and disappear completely underwater while feeding, and they are rarely seen tipping up like puddle ducks, although some of them will in very shallow water. To dive, these birds pull in their body feathers, which squeezes out air and makes them less buoyant. Then their powerful feet will thrust their arched body underwater. Once under the surface, they will use their legs like paddles and will steer with their head, tail, and feet. Their feet will tread while they probe the bottom with their bills for food. And when they're done feeding, they'll quit paddling and bob up to the surface, kind of like a cork. Diving ducks take flight like an airplane taking off on a runway. They run along the top of the water, flapping their wings until they can finally take flight. This is another easy way to identify diving ducks apart from puddle ducks. If a duck takes off like a float plane, you can make a good guess that it's a diving duck. Diving ducks are usually found more in open water and on big bodies of water and they're often seen away from land and shallow water. Some examples of diving ducks are buffleheads, ring-necked ducks, redheads, canvasbacks, and red-breasted mergansers, along with many other types. Where do they live? Most ducks are migratory, which means they travel long distances depending upon the time of year. They typically move north to breed and nest from spring through the fall, and they head south for the winter. Not all ducks migrate south into the US or further south for the winter. Some ducks will stop and spend the winter on the Great Lakes, mostly found in areas where these huge bodies of water do not freeze. Ducks and waterfowl in general are widely distributed throughout Ontario. They're found north along the Hudson Bay coast and south to the Great Lakes region. Wetlands are critical habitats for ducks. All ducks will depend on wetlands at some point throughout their lives. Wetlands are a good source of water and food. They're used as resting and shelter locations. And many social interactions occur in wetlands, including mating. Grasslands are also critical habitat for ducks, including farmland. Many species depend on grasslands for nesting and farmers' fields for feeding in the spring and autumn. What do they eat? Dabbling ducks are primarily herbivores, which means they're adapted to consume only plant material. They eat submerged vegetation, seeds, grain, 
roots, and tubers. Some of their favorite foods include pond weeds, wild celery, milfoil, and wild rice. But they do have quite a varied diet. Many dabbling ducks also feed in farmers' fields on grains and other crops. Some dabbling, as well as diving ducks, are omnivores. This means they consume both animal meat and plant material. They'll also eat insects, worm, fish, fish eggs, amphibians, and more. Some waterfowl, mainly diving ducks such as mergansers, are piscivores and have well-adapted serrated bills. Piscivores means they eat a diet of mostly fish. What are they known for? Ducks have some very fascinating and unique things about them. Ducklings have been known to communicate with each other while still inside of their eggs before hatching. This allows them to learn how to communicate with one another as well as their parents before they even hatch from their shells. They do this in part to coordinate hatching at the same time. Hatching at the same time is important because sticking together as a group helps protect them from predators. Even after hatching, ducklings swim and walk together following close behind their mothers. Surprisingly, ducks can close one eye and put half their brain to sleep while keeping watch with the other half. There are a lot of critters out there that would like to make a meal out of a duck and one way ducks have adapted to get some sleep while keeping out for potential danger is this adaptation. When a flock of ducks are together, that means every duck can take half brain naps and keep one eye open looking for trouble. Ducks are also known for being extremely fast flyers. Their average flight speed is 80 kilometers an hour. For reference, Usain Bolt can barely top 37 kilometers per hour. Some ducks can achieve much greater speeds than this. A red-breasted merganser was recorded flying at 160 kilometers per hour, which is about 60 kilometers an hour faster than a cheetah, the world's fastest land animal. And did you know that ducks were one major reason for the gold rush? That's right, waterfowl spawned the gold rush. Birds eat stone, gravel, and sand to grind up hard foods, which they store in a muscular organ called a gizzard. The gold rush started in Nebraska when hunters found gold nuggets in the gizzards of ducks. Then the hunt for gold was on. Can you harvest ducks in Ontario? The answer is yes. When planning to hunt waterfowl, it is important to refer to the most up-to-date version of the Migratory Birds Hunting Regulations. Hunting season for waterfowl varies by species and wildlife management unit, so be sure to check out when open seasons start in your region. To hunt for waterfowl in Ontario, you will need a valid outdoors card with a hunter accreditation, a valid migratory game bird hunting permit, a Canadian Wildlife Habitat Conservation Stamp on this permit, and a federal firearms license if you plan to hunt with a firearm. To legally hunt waterfowl, you are required to use non-toxic or non-lead shot to help protect wetlands. Ducks are usually hunted one of two ways. They're either hunted from a blind with a decoy spread out, where ducks are called and tricked into flying to the decoys to check them out, or they're hunted by doing something called jump shooting. In this case, hunters would walk or paddle and sneak in towards ducks and would try to shoot them before they could fly away. Duck hunting is often much easier when you have a trained dog to help retrieve the ducks after they are shot. When hunting waterfowl, be sure to learn proper identification. Some species may look similar from afar, so be sure to know exactly what you're shooting before you pull the trigger. As I've hope you learned today, ducks are very interesting and diverse creatures. Thanks so much for watching. 
be sure to like this video and to comment below. Don't forget to check out the resources section on our webpage. There you'll find free printable resource material like mini lessons and activity pages to follow up the virtual lesson. And please subscribe to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.